especially for her husband. And she did was ask some questions when she passed. She had, she was asked. What's good, everybody? Story about Shelly and Chris's affair to cover up the last. She answered no, and she passed it. Well, right. Did you fabricate Shelly and Chris's affair at all? She answered no. She passed. She passed these uh, questions. Have you ever had sexual contact with Chris? She answered no. She passed that question. So she did pass some questions, but the ones that we're most concerned about with some kind of sexual contact with your daughter, she did fail, and she was very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Never touch the son's private part. You answer no. The result of that question is you did not tell the truth. Oh, you did not tell the truth. And this is what we call the conditional result. The reason that the result is so Q, so Sam, hip hop rap views was good. Ronnie was good. Everybody was up. Ecstasy is something that we always want to see if it's still in the system. And a couple days later, it might be. So I asked him if he would take a drug test, and he refused. The producers asked him to take a drug test, and he refused. This leads me to believe that he took other drugs as a possible countermeasure to try to beat this test. This is why he came here, because he thought that he could get away with it. Well, then you went backstage, you gave your drug test, and you were given a 16 panel drug test. You disclosed that you used marijuana, but you didn't disclose that you used cocaine yourself for cocaine use. You did use cocaine? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, Pete. So, still, undisclosed drugs. Uh, when you start lying to the polygraph examiner, it doesn't work out well. How's everyone's day today? I'm going to put my camera on in a minute. I still can't rule out that he didn't try to use the Xanax last night or the day before uh, to try to suppress his reaction. It's countermeasures. That's a very short-lived drug that would show up on the uh, drug test this morning or this afternoon. So uh, the conditional result still stands. I estimate the accuracy of this polygraph yeah. test. I'm glad you guys are having a good day. That's what's up, Q. Not that you're early. I, sh I should have came late. <laughs> I could have sworn Ashley was going to come first. Nope. Wow. She not even hyped for this shit. What can I say? I'm not I'm not quoting a damn thing tonight. This is gonna be the first time ever I don't quote a goddamn thing from an artist. Believe me, I'm not doing a lot of quotables <laughs> in this review either. So he, he ain't got nothing, so I'm not quoting shit. I came empty handed. I, I am gonna recite the line where he just carries one at. I am gonna do that. 
I'm not reciting a damn thing. <laughs> Sorry, Nelly. Wow, good? this movie's gonna be funny as hell, you know. Nope. I ain't had to take no notes because I ain't reciting shit. I'm not gonna lie. I do like country grammar. Right, you said Nelly that already. Bill, we're gonna talk about Nelly. You've been you've been trolling me the whole goddamn day. I, I, I get it. I get it. It was very easy for me. I just I played like five, five, not even five minutes. Might have been like ten seconds, and I went to the next track. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I already know the, the hit songs that he had. Unfortunately, because it was in our faces during the two thousands. But other than that, no, I didn't. I didn't write down nothing. Like I said before, these are the only Nelly reviews on this channel, so y'all better be grateful. He better be grateful. You should attack him. <laughs> so hot in here. Mm. I was like, good gracious, ass is so vacious. Wow. <laughs> you know the lyrics to that song. I'm surprised. Hey. <coughs> What's up, Ash? What's good? Hey. See, she was late. She wasn't. <laughs> she wasn't waiting. This. <laughs> she was. She did not want to do this. I don't blame you, Ashley. I mean, it's, it was either this one or a Jadakiss album. That <laughs> the first one I'll take gladly. <laughs> gladly. When you put it that way, Reg, you know. I could have picked a lot of other albums. Yeah. You could have done Vanilla Ice. <laughs> now, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to go that far. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. I would have took them. <laughs> over Nelly? Yes, over Nelly. What you mean? That's a classic album. <laughs> Country Grammar is a classic. What you talking about? Oh, man. Yo. That's why I said this review is going to be funny as hell, though, because I'm just going to hear Tri's reaction. Mm. You're getting it right now. <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't even start yet. Mm. DJ Tim is, is <laughs> DJ Tim said it's Nelly time. Wow. Give me Vanilla Ice first album over Nelly. To the oh. extreme, I'll definitely take that. That's an album I had. Like I didn't buy Nelly. I, I bought a Vanilla Ice album. Wow, I didn't buy this album too. This was part of the C D lot and shit. Oh. And you kept it? <laughs> I mean I gave away sweat suit. Shit. You should have why didn't you throw away the other ones? <laughs> because I actually like country grammar and i can tolerate nellyville so oh god you can tolerate him he were tolerate i can tolerate kelly Rowland on dilemma <laughs> i can tolerate kelly Rowland. he just got overplayed oh yes yeah i take puffy over nelly i'm with you ronnie i'll take no way out i'm not gonna lie i would take no way out over <laughs> country i think we talked about that already though right yeah yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, if y'all can listen to Back for the first time, y'all can listen to Country Grammar. What? What are you talking about? That Lil' Chris album was way better than Country Grammar. It, it was way better, but at the same time, for that time, with the bangers and the club banging and what the South and Midwest was doing, and what the, the Duda and Nelly bought to the game and shit like that. What did Nelly bring to the... What did Nelly bought to uh, St. Louis, you mean? That, yeah, that whole harmonizing shit that Drake was doing and shit. Nelly was doing that fucking shit first. Well, was he? I didn't. I don't. I don't really know. I don't know because I didn't listen to him. So I, <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'll take Chingy's first album over Nelly. Okay, now you're going way too far. <laughs> Jackpot. Now you're going way too far. Jackpot was fire. <laughs> Jackpot was a dollar store. A dollar store Nelly. But what you talking about? <laughs> you really um, telling me you would take the greatness yes. of Nelly? The and greatness of Nelly. Hey, Chingy had some drinks on there. Holiday Shit. Inn, Holiday Inn was fire. Oh yeah. Does, <laughs> does, 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 Chingy, does Chingy have a song like "Ride with Me" and shit? He got, he got right there. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I thought that was a Nelly song at first. No, okay. really? Right. Wow. When I first heard it. <laughs> now I'm not gonna lie, y'all. Not both of these albums are not perfect. I'm just gonna be real with you. It's not perfect and shit. Because <laughs> yesterday when we talked about Pain is Love. Oh, Lord. What do you mean, although you like that, that was, album? That was great. 
Yes, but I I don't know how you jump from Jawu to Nelly. Like, what's next? The we doing we we doing Flow Rider next? <laughs> we can do that on your channel, me. No, I'm not doing that. Flow Rider. I don't listen to these people. I'm sorry. No. Like I said, I, no I have rider. my limit. I have. My you have your limit. limits. So so Nelly isn't the limit. Nelly Bill what's is the, the limit. limit. Pitbull? Pitbull is the limit. <laughs> Nigga, I I would rather talk about um. Fucking Lil John and the East Side Boys than Floor Rider. Hey, and I actually like that's Lil what John. you mean. They got fire. Lil John, yeah, I got crunk I, juice. Yeah, I actually, I actually like Lil John and shit. Because niggas, crunk you juice. know, the, the hip hop heads won't be like, oh, mm -hmm. that crunk ain't hip hop and shit, but okay. But y'all were bumping that shit all 2003, 2004. Y'all were bumping that fucking shit. Great. Right. If y'all can listen to Jimmy. Keith and Migos, y'all can listen to Lil John and the East Side Boys and shit. Hopefully we never have to discuss Migos and Chief Keef on here. No. Nah. Nah. <laughs> I, I just want to. I'm just testing the limits of, of of Reg on this channel now. So two chains. I can discuss two chains. And oh shit. God. God, you're gonna really gonna really like hit us with that two chains. <laughs> like like, can we just get through Nelly first? <laughs> I mean, like, I thought you liked two chains. Nope. He he sound better on features. I don't I don't care for none of his albums. To be honest, I, I only care for. Based all about it, based on the true story onward, I don't care for none of his earlier mm. shit, low key. Never heard it. Never heard it. Titty Boy, whatever shit. his name is. <laughs> <laughs> shit, we... I didn't like him when he was with DTP. I didn't care for him. <laughs> Titty Boy. <laughs> I like your hair, Ash, by the way. Nice. Yeah, Ash, Ash got like a menace to society thing going on with those right. guys. <laughs> America's she, nice. The, the female old dog, you know what I'm saying? She just needs the gun in her hand. For real. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I mentioned mystical. You came late. Mystical is coming. I got more mystical reviews coming up. Master P is coming up soon. Q, you like anything? <laughs> That's not saying much. You like his albums. You like anything. If it's not Pac, it's Two Chains or Bow Wow. <laughs> you know. Hey, speaking of Bow Wow, I could never stop. Sad Moss. What you you sent me that that uh that shit that uh thing about Ti confronting Bow Wow? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, Ti and Nelly cut for the battle over what he did to Sierra and shit. What's wrong with Ti, yo? Like, mind your business. And Ti is like, but this ain't even your hood. <laughs> Why are you screaming somebody else's hood? What Ti worried about Sierra for? But he probably want to cheat on Tiny and shit. Right. <sighs> you like everything except a mumble rap? Well, you right there. I wouldn't be surprised if you say, let's talk about some Tupac or some 2 Chains," <coughs> Or some, some Migos. Nah, I ain't gonna never talk about Migos <laughs> on this channel. Because everybody else talk about Migos and shit, man. I don't want, nah. I have my limits, man. Mm. I have my limits when it comes to Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> you heard, y'all heard they're trying to have a T-Pain in Future Versus? No, I ain't watching that. <laughs> nope. I'm not watching that. I don't. I don't like Future or or uh, Migos. So I can kill us. Do something. <laughs> no, T Pain. Whoever the hell it is. Well, T Pain would wash Future. I don't know. Mm. Wow. How about they like not have it at all? <laughs> Spare us the trouble. <laughs> you know. Maybe they'll have Jada Kids as an announcer and shit. Oh Lord, I definitely ain't watching it. <laughs> no. But every time I go on fucking Facebook, it's Jada Kids, Jada Kids, Jada Kids. At this point, I'm waiting for Jada Kids to be in SummerSlam this year. Like, you know, is he gonna face Roman Reigns for the title or, mm. you know, it's it's getting out of hand now. Now Sheik Luch is talking about how Dipset is not a real collective and shit. Right, like like because Sheik would know. <laughs> This is a guy coming from a group that they forgot they were a group for like 20 something years until last week. This nigga stay wearing the muscle shirts. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga be 48 oh, degrees God. wearing a muscle shirt. <laughs> right? It's not 95 degrees out, he wearing a tight ass muscle shirt. The, the shirt tighter than his jeans. You know? I ain't know they made joggers for upper body, man. They got the, the upper body joggers now you can wear? Mm. I'm not going to. The only future album I can really listen to on occasion is Dirty Sprite 2. But that's right. because I had a lot of a lot of college memories with that. Mm. Memories, huh? 
Yeah. <laughs> Good and bad, like party memories, sex I, I memories could imagine. and shit. I could imagine. No. I didn't see the, the locks of the Breakfast Club. I don't I don't care to see the locks ever again. <laughs> like it, it's 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 like overblown now. Every day it's something with the locks. Right. I I'm low key kinda of getting a little annoyed by that shit. But at the same time too, I will that Jada Kiss. I want BJ to come for that Jada Kiss, kiss the game goodbye. I, I want I want BJ to like like come on here now and tell people why he feel like Jada Kiss is the best MC ever. You know, because he's acting like he, he's invincible. I'm like, there's other MCs that's better than Jada Kiss. Trust me. The Archie Bunker of hip hop, though. <laughs> cool J. Cool J. Hey. Of course, yeah, Dirty Sprite Two. Yeah, you remember Dirty Sprite Two? Percocet, Rich Sex. Hey, that rhymes. Huh? Um, fuck up some commas and shit. That was the only time that nigga was relevant and shit. Yeah. Yeah, Cameron, he's coming, but not at this second. Got some. Not, not at this second? But Nelly, Nelly comes before Cameron? Because, <laughs> like I said, I'm trying to... Y'all know I'm not the biggest Dipset fan, but I'm trying to get some more Cam albums and shit. Yeah. Now there's BJ. So we got to have him on for those, for those Dipset discussions. <laughs> Jim jokes. Oh damn. Damn Sam. <laughs> Jim jokes. Wait, don't you mean Jim Jones? Did he, did he just call him Coo Coochie? You just called him Coochie? Coochie, not Coochie. <laughs> not Coochie. Uh, <laughs> hey y'all, I'm burning. I'm gonna I'm turn off my thermostat down because I'm burning up right now. Yeah. You on fire tonight. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Yes, you know, Ronnie. Don't don't remind me, please. <laughs> Kelly Kelly Rowland and Nelly Dilemma or Method Man and Mary J. Blige? Are you is that really a question? You really asking us which one which song is better? <laughs> I I got Meth and Mary all day. I'm sorry. Dang. Nelly and Kelly. It sounds like a morning show, Nelly featuring Kelly on the morning. <laughs> Live with Nelly and Kelly. Well, they did do Kelly Rowland wrong with that album, though. They did? When, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about when they rushed that debut album and shit, and that shit was trash. Oh, yeah. Oh, never heard it. Really? Nah. I, I thought you were talking about the Nelly album. I no, know no, no. Kelly's album. Nah, never heard it. Nelly rhymes with Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, dude. What is this? Dr. Seuss tonight? <laughs> <sighs> I'm gonna need some good weed and liquor for this review, cause mm. you picked it. So I don't, I don't I understand. Know. I know, <laughs> but I know this is gonna be something that um mm. you gonna make me hella laugh and shit. Yeah, yeah, that's what you wanted. That's that's why you picked it. Let's let's get all the trashy reviews so try can make me laugh tonight. <laughs> yeah, I, I never said this was a trash review. Oh, it's not. Nah, no, my, my bad. It is to me. <laughs> I said the next trash room might be a Mills album. I, I like some song. I it's been a long time since I heard oh, that album. Oh, so you like a Mill, but you don't like that. Well, what was wrong with a Mill in the first place? I mean, what? Well, I don't understand why they got rid of her. Cause she wasn't that good. <laughs> That's not why they got rid of her. There's something else behind that. Maybe, maybe Jay Z got her pregnant or something. Stop. No. Stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, every, man, every, Everybody will prove Jay Z works. He um, always gets pregnant. Shit. Damn. I, I want to officially apologize to the Carters. I didn't mean that. <laughs> don't don't make the Beehive come up here and shit like that. Fuck you. Know, they might they might shut us down for, they for spreading Jay rumors. Love CDs at my ass and shit. They might they might shut us down for spreading rumors. Um, I mean, you know, there's been rumors about him having kids uh, for years. So. Oh yeah. You know, she wasn't giving up the cookie. I think that's what it was, uh, DJ Tim. She wasn't giving up the nookie. She wasn't even that fine like that. I don't know if real. She had a big ass nose. Right, and, and that fucking donkey face and shit. Like, that's just not cute. Hey man. In 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 COVID, there's desperate times. Believe me, I've been through it. <laughs> you would you would take you would take anything in the skirt during this um you know. Shit. 
I'm not. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Well, first, not, I, I felt like them total girls were kind of fine at one point. Keisha. Jeez, yeah. Man. I ain't care for the double L. Pam, I think, was was a, a lesbian. Everyone thought that. No, she not? I don't know. She's just a real, if she's not, she's just a real muscular woman. <laughs> I, I didn't even watch that BT reality show yeah. when all them I didn't R&B has been was trying to form a group. I think they're coming up with an album, too. They already released the EP. Oh, they released it? Okay. Oh. Everyone said it, it sounds like from some shit from 05, 06. Wow. I haven't watched it. It's like making the band. Right. <laughs> Jay Z and Free, yes. That's another rumor. I actually met Free before. Free was Free was fine though. Shit. She's still fine. I don't blame Jay Z. <laughs> nigga, you, I, nigga, what you mean? You cheated on Beyonce and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but with who? We still don't know. Becky with a good hair. It wasn't Free. Nigga, he cheated on Beyonce. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, but with who? It don't matter with who he cheated on Beyonce. So if he if he uh, cheated if you found out he cheated on Beyonce with like one of the Kardashians, what would you think? I would think he lost his fucking mind. <laughs> Courtney's not fine enough for him. To be honest, I wanna be with none, none of them damn Kardashians are fine. Not Courtney even Kim. Fine, not even Chloe. Courtney is fine. I'd definitely would bone her. I'm not I'm not into witches and white supremacists and shit. <laughs> Cause every black man they be with, all some weird voodoo shit always happens. Right. right. Ray J, Kanye. What is up with all these fucking rhymes? Ray J, Kanye, <laughs> Reggie Bush, um, that Chris Humphreys, mm-hmm. Lamar, Lamar Odom, right? OJ Simpson. Mm-hmm. Shit. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, y'all know Chloe and OJ. James Harden. Right. Rashad McKenz. It's so many. <laughs> So many, and they're not even in the, in the league no more. Right, they Thompson. Kristen Thompson, right? He he's still playing. I don't know how his bum ass is still getting money. Shit, I'm he ready. Cheated on Chloe again. Yep. Crazy. I'm <laughs> ready. <laughs> like, <laughs> trying to talk about this. <laughs> Shit. Mm. But yeah, yeah, I'm ready whenever y'all are. Mm-hmm. What's up, you too? How's everyone doing this lovely Thursday night? It's your boy Reg in the building. I got my homeboy Try with me. What up? Got my homegirl Ash with me. That's good. And for the next and final double review of this week, first of all, um, the Ja Rule review last night was fun as fuck. That was great. I uh, hope y'all liked my Ja Rule impersonation last night. Um, I did. <laughs> What's my motherfucking name? <laughs> Only nigga that can yell in the fucking love song and shit, but okay. <laughs> anyway, um, next double review is gonna be Nelly's Country Grammar and Nellyville. Um, of course, we want to start with Country Grammar since that was released first, and I'm about to pull up the album cover right now. But this was released in June 27, 2000, on Universal under his own imprint called For Real, which is also known as Dirty Entertainment, D E R R Y, because he was known for doing the whole er and the hip hop and shit like that too before Chingy kind of stole it. But that's another story for a different day. Um, singles I was known for are Country Grandma, Hot Shit, E I, Ride With Me, and Batter Up. Producers include C Love, Kevin Law, Jason J E Epperson, City Spud. Um, Steve Blast Willis and Basement Beats. Um, and the guest appearances include Cedric the Entertainer, who is like the spokesperson of this whole fucking album, if you ask me. Um, this album and Nellyville. <coughs> Sent Lunatics, which Sent Lunatics was like his crew at that time, too, which consisted of members like Murphy Lee, City Spud, Ali, um, Kajan. Even though the main members were Murphy Lee, Ali, and C Spud, and shit like that too. Um, Lil Wayne, Teamsters, and that's it. All right, I'm just gonna keep it a buck with y'all. This is not usually the album I would usually review on this channel. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all right now. But 
Y'all know how I do. I'm always unpredictable. <laughs> Did you get always. paid to do this? <laughs> Nigga, I actually want to talk about this album, believe it or okay. not. So this is because like I, I just always saw it on a CD lot. I was ordering some CDs. I was like, mm-hmm. you know, I never really disliked Nelly, but he's not really my cup of tea and shit like that. But how did y'all get into Nelly? I'm just gonna be real. Let's mm-hmm. just. Well, let's go. Just don't, don't start with me because I never did. I never got into. Let's. We got to talk to. Ask well, how you about that. Intro- how were you introduced and shit? How was I introduced? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, I was minding my business watching Rap City one day, <laughs> and the video came on. I'm like, who the hell is this country grandma with these nursery rhymes? That's what I was thinking to myself, and I was like, oh god, this is no good. And somehow he managed to stay around for years, and I could never understand why. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. And and you know having to go through that ordeal of going of seeing dilemma the dilemma video and that was like the ultimate thought song of the two thousands you know what I'm saying and you know seeing them on the VMAs and I'm like why I didn't never understood the hype for him but then I remembered there wasn't nobody from St Louis that was really repping St Louis like that until he came out you know and and you know he kind of like opened the door for that that area but um. I wasn't a Nelly fan, so I don't know shit about him. I know I know he used to um play baseball. He was drafted by the Cardinals. I know that because you know I love baseball. I follow baseball, but he should have went to baseball. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, he should have went to. He would have been a big star in baseball. You know, you doing two things like Deion Sanders. He would have been huge. But that's really all I know about him. I don't know anything else. Never listened to a Nelly album. I didn't listen to these albums. I just skipped through. I know the big songs. That's about it. Mm. Okay. When this album came out, I was a kid, so I had to have been six at the time. And and my mom and I, we were watching TV, and then all out of nowhere, she must have flipped the one of the music channels. I don't know if it was either BET or MTV, but the Country Grammar video was on, and I first saw the video on one of those channels. And then, of course, a lot of his songs were getting played on radio, like Ride With Me, EI, Country Grammar, of course, things like that. And plus, a lot of the kids I was in daycare with, a lot of them liked one of those songs or were singing the songs when it came on. So, But I never disliked Nelly either. I just never really gravitated toward him like that. And I remember Dilemma being a huge song at the time. I remember seeing the video for that as well. To me, it was catchy at the beginning, but then after a while, I feel like the song got overplayed. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's so much that I, I can't get the song out of my head after 20 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's still playing in my head. Shit. I, to me, it's got to be, of course, a Nellyville era because that fucking Dilemma song. Mm-hmm. I remember my sister always used to watch the BT and TRL. 106 in Park. All them motherfuckers used to always play this shit. Yeah. Always on the radio. Like To me, it was the Nellyville era that was like my introduction. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to lie. This might sound sacrilegious, but Nelly was one of my first introductions to rap and hip-hop music, believe it or not. Oh wow! I'm, cause like, <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 not lying because when I was y'all know I was when I was little I was growing up in the two, the early two thousand shit, you know it was the first rappers that really came up in my mind was Snoop, Nelly, and Eminem. Really, those were like the main rappers. Then once oh two oh three, that's when of course I knew about John Fifty, but I didn't really become like an avid listener or avid hip hop head till like years later. Mm-hmm. But Nelly was like one of those rappers, like you know, when you're just getting into music mm-hmm. and your parents want you to listen to certain shit, mm-hmm. stuff like that. That's family friendly or whatever. <laughs> My parents do really not like hip hop, but at the same time, too, it's like with Nelly, just seeing this little short motherfucker <laughs> with some nursery rhyme <laughs> beats and shit like that. I'm just like, you know what? You know what? It's just like I have, I heard country grammar years later and stuff like that. I was like, okay, 
it got some it got some heat to it and then then i heard nellyville which we're going to talk about that but I, it's not like I don't. I am a Nelly Nelly fan. It's like I'm not like one of those motherfuckers that go to his concerts and stuff like that. Dang. But at the same time, he is pretty much an innovator. I'm not gonna. He is an innovator, whether people like it or not. Like he is a polarizing figure. And yes, he did go after Karis one two, which well, Karis one one after him, which we'll talk about that. But I'm, yeah. I'm looking. <laughs> The whole time I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be looking at you with a side eye. <laughs> I'm, I'm convinced being, you got paid to do this. I'm being honest. Like, did yeah. Nelly pay you to do this? Nigga, ain't Nelly ain't paid me. <laughs> but we do, we do. Me, Nelly, and Prodigy do have the same birthday. Oh God, that's why. Oh man. We are we're all Scorpios and shit. Wow. So. My mom's a Scorpio. She can't stand Nelly. So something, my something and my wrong. Sister are too. Wow. Yeah, it's Nelly. A, it's a Scorpio thing. <laughs> it's a Scorpio thing. Okay. Yeah, so yes, sir. that's. That's why this review is kind of, kind of mm. special, you know, just for all my Scorpio heads and shit, you know what I'm so, saying? So, growing up listening to Nelly, you didn't look at him like, like, L.O. Cool J? Hell no. <laughs> I'm just checking. Hell no. Okay. Because I, yeah, was Nelly influenced by L.L.? You can say that, but, I mean, I I, I knew from, a, from an age, he wasn't, like, lyrical compared to other MCs at that time, like Jay. Mm-hmm. And um, who 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 was blowing up at that time? In it was like Cam and shit. Eminem, Eminem, Jada mm-hmm. Kiss, you know, yeah. oh, shit boy. like that. You know what I'm saying? And because when I when it comes to hip, I'm more like the lyrical complex. That's the hip hip hop I fuck with the most. Mm-hmm. A lot of like the pop rap hip hop. You know, it it depends. I love DJ Jazz, and Jeff Fresh Prince. I love Kid and Play mm-hmm. and shit like that too. I can get with Tone Lope and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Mace, I can get with on occasion. But Nelly has been like an acquired taste in a weird way. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I can't really dislike him because he's like one of those people that actually got me listening Mm -hmm. to rap music. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But let's get into who Nelly is. He was born Cornell Errell Haynes Jr. How did he get? Oh, Cornell Nelly. Okay. I was wondering, how the hell did he get Nelly? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, he was actually born in Austin, Texas. You know, um, his father was like in the Air Force and shit like that. And, you know, when his parents divorced, he moved with his moms. And when he was in high school, you know, he hooked up with his friends like Ali, Murphy Lee, Kajan Slowdown, and his half of the city Spud, which I've always thought City Spud sounded a little bit like Mace on a couple of tracks too, but I could be wrong. But anyway, um, yeah, so and fast forward to like 1997, you know, they formed the St. Lunatics and they were like locally famous with this song, Gimme What You Got. And so they ended up, you know, trying to like achieve more success, but City Spud actually in 1999 got caught up in like in a robbery, got caught up in a robbery shit, you know what I'm saying? And so I think they had to push some shit back. And with Nelly, Nelly and stuff like that too, you know, he was really trying to also, you know, find his way, his name in hip hop because hip hop at that time was really generated by the East Coast, West Coast. The South at that time was really getting his foot, you know, with Outkast, No Limit, Cash Money. But with the Midwest at that time, I mean, you had Bone Thugs, you know, doing their thing and shit. Of course, Eminem was blowing up at that time, too. But St. Louis, he really wanted to put St. Louis on the map. And speaking of Bone Thugs, I I watched a video where Bone Thugs and Nelly kind of had a little beef in the earlier part of their career and shit like that, too, because I feel like Bone Thugs thought that Nelly was trying to jack their style or whatnot. I could be wrong, but yeah, because... If you listen to like a lot of Nelly's earlier shit, you can see the Bone Thugs harmonizing influence and shit like that too, and whatever you know what I'm saying. But yeah, man, um, that's something interesting. If I find a video, I will send it to you, try. Well, I think they were high because he he don't sound nothing like Bone Thugs. Nah, nah. Like he he his style is like more and I, no pun intended, but more dirtier and shit like that. You know, <laughs> it's like. 
how can I put this? Imagine if a go go, if you were like doing go go music, and you wanted to be a rapper. In a, I don't know how to explain. It. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, like I said, net, like I said, that's why it's been a while since so I really talked about this album because like I never, I've always thought about how to really approach this fucking album and shit, but. Yeah, I know. Try still looking at me with a side eye and shit. Yep, the whole the whole time I'll be looking at you. My eyes gonna stay like that for the whole night. <laughs> but yeah, man. So, so this album came out and shit like that. Um, he he got a deal with Universal, and he ended up you know signing them for a distribution deal, and there you go, country grammar. And this is the album cover right here. You no know, Nelly looking down on us, you know, because he is. <laughs> I love him. We should be looking down on him, <laughs> you know, because he's about to take over the game or whatever and shit. But okay, so yeah. <clears throat> so of course I don't have the booklet. This is the CD right here. Of course, you know. So yeah, seventeen tracks. Salute, salute King Joe. He watching all the way from Mexico. Oh shit! Okay. We got people from Mexico watching this shit. This yes, is, this is for, ne- for Nelly. For Nelly? Yeah. What was you all for Ja Rule? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> shit where was y'all from metallica shit shit <laughs> i wasn't even there it was just my body my physical was going somewhere else let me stop but yeah but, but, but salute jose salute other than that um let's get this shit started so track number one <clears throat> it's called the intro with Cedric the entertainer um him and cedric pretty much go way back of course because cedric is from st louis as well too um, he's pretty much, you know, just saying, yo, Nelly's about to be the hottest rapper, you know, just hyping Nelly up and shit, you know what I'm saying? So, that's really what I got from the intro. Yeah, you know, so, uh, I love Cedric. You're a funny comedian, and, I, I, you know, I guess he was like, he had to represent for his, his hometown um, boy, so. Yeah. What I got the intro is pretty much Cedric just pretty much shouting Nelly out to... I guess pretty much thanking him for putting St. Louis on the map, you know? Definitely. Um, Now you're going to get into the St. Louis. Very dope track, in my opinion. Um, This track right here is just pretty much him putting St. Louis on the map. You know, just talking about where he's coming from and shit. I mostly just like this song for the beat. I love that easy riding kind of beat and stuff like that too. So, yeah, this was pretty hot. No, I didn't like it. You didn't like this one? (laughs) Nope, I don't like it. Oh, God. Mm. Okay. Yeah, even though St. Louis isn't a favorite off this album for me, I'll admit it was pretty decent. The fact that he's pretty much repping his hometown definitely speaks volumes it lets people know where he's coming from and i guess a little bit of a story behind the song exactly now we're gonna get into um greed hate and envy this is produced by city spud um again another song self-explanatory just talking about how money can cause like greed hate and envy nothing really nothing really groundbreaking like it's like a like subject matter wise but again i did like the way he was rapping on this one and shit like that and the beat by city spud was pretty dope too so yeah man i i fuck with this song no no i didn't like it (laughs) okay Yeah, greed, hate, envy, I pretty much got the gist of what the song was about, pretty much saying that money's the root of all, all evil. And it definitely changes people when, once people uh, once people get it. That's what I got out of it. Definitely. All right, so now we're about to get into, of course, um, Country Grammar, mm-hmm. the breakout song. Yeah. I'm going down, down, baby. Your street in the lady in the rain. <laughs> like this little nursery rhyme kind of shit. <laughs> um, 
I'm not gonna lie. When I first heard this shit, I did not like it. Really. <laughs> I was just, what made you like it? I'm, I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna okay. get into that. It was just like one of it was the video with he was wearing like this little baseball white baseball jersey with the fitted cap, mm-hmm. glasses. I think he had like a little grill on and shit. Uh, he had the fucking do rack and he was just doing some dancing and shit. I was just like, yeah. what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> and this and this like this was after the whole Nellyville the Nellyville explosion and shit. So. <laughs> But then, over the years, you ever have that one song that gets in your head, right? Yeah. And and random places you sing, I'm going down, down, baby, like randomly and shit like that. Like yeah. Dilemma? Dilemma was an earworm, but we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, but is it my favorite Nelly song? No. But at the same time, it gets the job done. It's enjoyable. And <laughs> if you can get past lyrics like candy painting, fans, fans fainting while I'm entertaining, wild ain't it, how me and money get acquainted, or even lines like, who say pretty boys can't be wild niggas, loud niggas, okay corral niggas, foul niggas, run up in the club and bust in the crowd nigga, like. Mm, bars. <laughs> Yeah, bars. Like, this nigga yeah. rhymed nigga eight times in the second word, bro. Okay. Wow. What an MC. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Country Grammar, it's, it's an enjoyable song. I, there's better song singles I've enjoyed from Nelly. That's all I got to say. Yeah. I, I guess it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess, I, I guess it's playable every once in a while, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, even though this is not my favorite Nelly song, I'll admit it does bring back somewhat of memories. But I'll, I'll be real, I was way too young. I didn't know what in the world was going on in the video, let alone, let alone what the hell he was talking about. I was a kid, so right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and if I didn't know back then, I'm pretty sure my mom didn't know what the hell. <laughs> None of us did. Yeah. Going down, down, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's catchy. The chorus is catchy. It's um, it is playable. If you want to hear something like that from him every once in a while. Yeah. So, yeah. Not bad. Dude. Now I'm gonna get to steal the show featuring the Saint Lunatics. Um, I'm just gonna be real with y'all. I'm not a big, big fan on a, the San Lunatics like that. Mm. Besides Murphy Lee on occasion, so. But this one was pretty much the best album where they were front and center, due to like the quality of the songs and shit. Mm. Just pretty much a braggadocio song. Um, I'm not gonna lie, fucking Nelly did his. He was the storm that stole the show. It it it, it was it was a good song but again. That beat too. Had like that Midwestern flavor to it. I don't know, mm. man. Mm, I didn't like it. Mm. Why not just take a shit on the album, try? <laughs> if I had it in front of me, I would. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. Still the show, yeah. Um, I admit it wasn't bad. Yeah. To me, I think the beat is what saved the song. I mean, everyone did their thing. I'm not too familiar with the Saint Lunatics. To be real, honestly, this album pretty much introduced me to who they who they are. And even though I don't know like the members and all their all the stuff they did, but I don't know, it definitely gave them a moment to shine. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, appreciate that, Ronnie. Oh, uh, you mentioned Norman. Oh yeah. Mm. Um. Next track we got Interlude. Um, it's another set of the entertainer interlude. Mm-hmm. Um, he's pretty much just saying like just saying what's up to Nelly and shit like that. You know, give him that. You know, what I'm saying this. Nothing really needed. I don't give a fuck. I need him. Ash. Uh, pretty much Cedric just hitting Nelly up. No. I guess pretty much saying that um he missed his call or whatever or missed his page or whatever, wanted to get a chance to like talk and 
get caught up or whatever when they get a chance. That's what I got out of it. There ain't nothing to it. Got you. I now ride with me. Mm-hmm. This is my shit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like, um, this was like pretty much a song where he was like, if you want to go and take a ride with me, we be willing to fuck with the gold deeds. Oh, why do I? Mm-hmm. Hey, it must be must the money. Be money. Like, <laughs> well, you talked up tonight. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's my shit, man. I'm yeah, telling you. That's, admit, this is what, one of my favorites. Yeah. Like, nostalgic reasons. I can never yeah. dislike this song. Yep. Um, that beat alone, like I'm not gonna lie, the production on this album though, I it's it's some it has some heat though. We got some heat. J J E did this beat, you know. Personally, I, I wish he would have done more shit with Nelly, but that's another yeah. story. Um, just like a nice little summer banger and shit like that, you know. Meeting somebody at a club, and everybody go to your place, and you know you're about to get down and shit like that. Um, love the usage of. The debarge sample that they use and shit too. So yeah, oh, my song. I like it. You did really? Yeah, I didn't know that. I did not. Oh, oh wait, now now I know. Never mind. Don't tell me. I didn't know. Wow. Yeah, another Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Just okay. It's okay. Just okay. <laughs> I I I've seen the video too many times, so <laughs> it's okay. Mm. I feel. I never seen the video, but I know this song definitely brings back memories. I mean, I think one of the first times I heard this song was at a skating rink when I was yeah. a kid, and and even though I didn't know what what the what the hell they were talking about back then, I just knew the part um, like the chorus was catchy and everything. When the part go, "Hey, must be the money," <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. I remember hearing this song in um, in a scene in the movie Ted 2 when they were on their way to New York to meet with another lawyer for Ted's case. Yeah. <laughs> and that was funny. <laughs> but yeah, this is definitely one of my favorite songs by Nelly that I never get tired of. Yeah, definitely. This is a definitely a banger right here and shit yeah. right there. All right. Now everybody get into EI. Underlay, underlay, or whatever. Hey, mommy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, um, Nelly always likes to talk about sex, so this song basically stands for "Eat It," oh. and <laughs> which I, n- I never knew. It still I didn't know. Cause I was like, "Why the hell are you calling EI?" But he's saying underlay, underlay, and hey, shit. Mommy, but yeah, yeah, oh, oh. Was he just using a Taco Bell commercial? Yeah, I remember. Really? That. Yeah. I didn't. I, I did not know. I, I damn. Remember. Damn. I must have forgot about that. Yeah. This. This one. This one was okay. You know, like I said, it's, it's enjoyable. It's entertaining and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the line where he says, "And every time I bust a bomb, baby, give me some more." You say you like it when I hit it from behind and I beat I'll be right, right back. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, man, Nelly, man. Man, Nelly be having them bars alone. <laughs> Get a room in Trump Tower just to hit for three hours. Kick the bitch up out of the room because she used the word hours. Hey. Mm. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, mm-hmm. this, this was entertaining. It got me through the day. It was okay. <laughs> okay. One of the better songs. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Wait, what, what, what did you say? I said it was okay. It was one, one of his better songs. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is another favorite of mine. Mine from Nelly, I'll be real. Besides Ride With Me. I can listen to this all day long, too. All these years, I did not know what the hell EI stood for. But now that I know, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that my mom and dad would have had a fit if I was singing <laughs> the lyrics. Right. Right. They'd be like, what the hell she just say? Right. <laughs> on the way, yeah, on this the is way. another catchy song that that never gets old. I mean, mm-hmm. just from the chorus when it go, underlay, underlay, mommy, ee ya, ee ya, uh oh. Like, who don't like that? For real. 
this might be Tri's favorite song. Thicky oh. Thick Girl. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I wonder what this song is about. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. <laughs> so this is pretty much one of my favorite top three songs off this album. Yeah. Um, another song I wish got more airplay, but was stuck with hot in here and all that shit. But anyway, mm. uh so this is Murphy Lee, he ate that first verse when he was like First step, we get a naked pants gone in 20 seconds. It's getting hectic. Wreck it just like a hoopty with insurance. What but it seems I'm behind schedule with broad troubles, twisting and pulling. I'm like, shorty, help me. Come on, help me. Please don't blow my high because I'm too horny. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> and the beat to um, City Spud did that fucking beat. That, that, again, that's a very grimy ass. I can see that being played like at a fucking strip club and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, everyone loves that thick girl, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. No. I like I like thick women. I don't want to hear Nelly talk about it. <laughs> no. no, no, no. <laughs> Not for me. Mm. Um, thicky, thick girl. Um, yeah, I already, I already kind of, I already figured out what the song's going to be about anyway. Because of the title alone, Nelly has a thing for thick women. Every man has a preference. But yeah, um, the song was decent. Not a favorite of mine, but it wasn't bad. Slim, slim women are, are, are beautiful also. Oh yeah, women are just it's beautiful. Not, yeah, it's not just about the thick women. It just, I feel like people just make a big deal out of fat ass and shit. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, but, yeah. <coughs> Jello's fault. Really, really fault. I blame J- when Jello came out. They were acting like she had the biggest ass in Hollywood. I'm like, are y'all serious? Jello. No, yeah. that Jenna Van Oy, Stevie from the Parkers. Oh yes, yeah. people oh, make I a big you. deal out of her ass. Yes. I'm like, her too. I ain't even that fat. Her too. Yeah. I'm like, god damn, y'all picked one white girl <laughs> with an ass, and y'all picked her. Right. Yeah. Her? She was cute though. I mean, yeah, she was cute though, but. I've seen a lot of fat ass on white girls and shit. Like, <laughs> hell, Christina Aguilera had a fat ass and shit. Right. She gorgeous too. Well, she was. Wait, wait. Actually, she's Mexican or, or she's not really white, white. But... She's Latin. Really? Yeah, yeah she's Latin. Latin. Mm-hmm. Oh, I did not know. Aguilera. Aguilera. Aguilera was just a Latin name. Oh, What's her name? Um, that white girl who did that one track. Um, Benny Spears. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> um... Damn it. <sighs> There's so many. Jo- Jojo. Jojo. Yeah, oh, Jojo. Jojo. Jojo's gorgeous too. Yes. Her ass was gorgeous, man. No yeah, one talks about is. her ass. She, she can sing too. Oh, yeah. yeah. She still can. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, Track number 10. You're going to have For My featuring Lil Wayne. This is probably um, one of my two favorite tracks off this album. And it's crazy too because I'm not a big fan of early Wheezy. Hot boy weedy like that. I felt like he came on his own with Carter One, but this was like an exception and shit. Um He did steal the show on this one, but again, it wasn't really that many quarterable lines and shit. I just like really them going back and forth, like front like representing their niggas and shit. And of course, J E did the production and shit. <laughs> J E, Jay Z, anyway. Um. <laughs> no, I didn't like it. Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I wasn't really feeling for mine either. Respect. Now we're going to get to other side. Other spelled U T H A. I love this track, man. Um, again, another one of my favorites off this album and shit like that. Just Nelly. Probably one of his best songs on the song. On the song. I'm, one of his one of the best songs off this album performance wise and shit like that in terms of flow and energy and shit like that you know what i'm saying i like the line where he says buying chanel fendi donna k plus i heard they took your job away they got your kids shit on layaway you got a four or five infinite day you're living live you know i, I i'm saying it like I, i'm probably fucking up how he's saying it though but you know how I'm probably <laughs> yeah shit. <laughs> yeah it, it is what it is I like 
Well, you get an E for effort for trying, because I, I couldn't recite nothing from him, so... <laughs> nope. Ooh. No. I didn't care for it. <laughs> yeah, other side w wasn't bad, but... Um, I mean, it did have a story to tell, pretty much. I like that, but... Well, other than that, it's not a favorite of mine. I can take it or leave it. Respect. Um, yeah, um, Jose, we heard about that shit. Um, yeah. They need to, they need to put the main ingredient, P-Rock and CL Smooth, man. Right. That's what they need to put, man, shit. But anyway. Though Damn Rappers. That's the next track. Yeah. Um... I didn't really care for this track like that. I'm gonna be real. Yeah, it wasn't really memorable to me. Now that did I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. It wasn't really a memorable song. Yeah, and so was Rap Some Den with the Send Lunatics. This is like one of those Send Lunatics tracks I can take it or leave on some real shit. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Uh, rap something. Yeah, I'll admit it was all right. Pretty much is another song that put the St. Louis Ticks on the forefront. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Now, batter up. Mm -hmm. This is my fucking shit. Um, first of all, Nelly get pays homage to the Jefferson's theme song and shit like that. Yep. Like he was the first rapper to do that shit. But okay, <laughs> all. Yeah. But yeah, just it just has all. It's, it's pretty much all of these niggas pretty much rapping like using baseball references and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was unique the way they did it. Um, again, Murphy Lee stole the show on this one and stuff like that too. Um. He had one line I like when he says, I promise I guess deeper than foul cabinets when rapping. Money, 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 what's happening? I'm coming up like family members in basements. I stay bent, making a mill to play with by a builder. You can pay me and shit. So definitely love that track. And again, J.E. did that one with Steve Blast Willis. So this to me is a classic in my opinion. I like the concept of... Uh... What? You like something on this album? <laughs> What? I like I like the concept of him uh, being that he was a he's a, a baseball player. Uh, he incorporated that in the song. I like the concept. That's about it. I just like the concept of that. He, he, if they if he actually like was rhyming and he it would have been nice if he was throwing in like baseball famous baseball players in there like from the Cardinals, you know Ozzy Smith, you know uh, uh, Yadier Molina, you know uh, baseball players like that. I think it would have been a great song. Okay. Respect, respect. I'll admit, mean, Batter Up was, um, it was pretty good. It was something different. Definitely wasn't expecting to reference the Jefferson's theme song into this track. So, and for him to be the first one to do it, I'm a bit impressed. Shit, I wasn't expecting to try to like something on this album. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga could have said he liked the beat, eh? It could have been like some shocking and shit. Right? I'm surprising myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, never let him see you sweat. Okay, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I didn't really care for this track. Be real. This is probably my least favorite track off this album. Um, the Teamsters. It was like the team, mostly the Teamsters song. I don't, that's a. I don't even know who the fuck the Teamsters are. <laughs> so yeah, they, I think they produced for Chingy's album. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, that makes was it even it, better. It, maybe I'm getting the production. I, I want to say that it was them or the track stars that oh. produced this shit. That makes oh. it even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and nah, I didn't care for this one. Yeah, this was um. This song was forgettable to me. Never let, let never let him see you sweat. I don't even remember the song being on the album. Right. That's how much of a blur it was. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the last official track, "Love and Me," "Love" and spelled L-U-V-E-N. 
Um, I'm sorry, but I have to say that's the worst spelling on this whole fucking album. <laughs> I thought this was like a fucking lotion brand or some shit. Like, right. I was like, what the fuck is loving? But I heard I was like, loving. I was like, I, I can deal with a lot of this shit, but that has got to be the worst spell on this one. Anyway, I had to say that. Oh. But this song was actually pretty good. Um, It's pretty much a tribute to all the people that had his back his entire life. Like, the first mm. verse is to his mom's. Yeah. You know, the second verse is to his girl. Yeah. And then the third verse is like for his homies, aka like the Saint Lunatics and shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked it, you know. Like I said, nothing groundbreaking. Like he wasn't the first rapper to do have a shout out track and shit like that. But mm-hmm. eh, I like it. And that's where to end the album after the last couple of fillerish kind of tracks. Ronnie said he uh, he sampled the Tony 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 uh, uh, track. Um, whatever you want. I did not even know he used that interpolation. Yet. Thank you. No. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't Ronnie, Ronnie be on a mission now. <laughs> Mr. Wikipedia, that's what we got to call him now. Mm. Eric Santa Claus and Ronnie's Mr. Encyclopedia. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, we say that with love, y'all. We say that yes. with love. Yeah. <coughs> I don't love this track, though. <laughs> no. Wow. No. Okay. I like I like loving me, you know, you know it's not the worst um, song that's spelled differently. I mean, we've we've seen other stuff spelled random as fuck on this album, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like it was a, definitely a good way to to end off the album. Right. And the out show was pretty much um set to entertain us, saying that he got to go. His cell phone is batteries running low. You know. Not really in point, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. not really, not really to go on. Just letting Sergio just let Nelly know. Um, yeah, his phone has been acting up, or fat battery about to die on it. Just hit him up another day. That's why. Right. Yes. Yes. Other than that, believe it or not. Very good album. It had some hiccups. I'm not going to lie, but if I want to be entertained, I'm gonna definitely listen to this album because I know I'm not going to get lyricism. I'm not. I'm not going to get dark production. I'm just going to get slang. I'm going to get Midwestern style. I'm going to get all that shit. And you got to give Nelly his props, you know, for being one of those rappers. Sam gave it one mic, okay. <laughs> Damn. You gotta give Nelly his props for like doing his thing, you know, being like a one man band and shit like that too. I'm on on some tracks. Um does it like does it, it does have some moments where it's like okay, it's a bit too corny and shit. <laughs> but at the same time too, it was the early two thousands, so yeah. That's how I can think so. Mm. What was that? Oh, no idea. What the hell? What the fuck was that? I have no idea. <laughs> that's not me, because ain't nobody what? else. That's not me, because ain't nobody else in this crib is. Anyway, um. <laughs> damn, okay. That was random as fuck. Yeah, wow. Cause I, I thought I was high, so I was like. <laughs> I know I was not the only one that heard it. No, it was, I heard it too. <laughs> you said that's the dips of the eagle. <laughs> okay, oh, shit. Um, I did not like it. I did not like it. I'm gonna give us a four point five. Wow, I'm seeing different scores here. I'm seeing one mic. I'm seeing five mics. <laughs> not Nas. Hell? Not Nas voice. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, even mm. though this was my first time listening to an entire Nelly album, <laughs> I'll admit it had some, it had some decent stuff. It had the stuff that I remember hearing as a kid, <laughs> and some stuff I didn't care too much for. <laughs> so uh, yeah. I'm gonna give this album a 3.5 out of five. 
And this is why I love doing reviews like this because we get different scores and shit. Yeah. Uh, Jose gave me six mics. <laughs> oh, is that good or bad? Is oh, that good or bad? Jose, you know we I do the five mic rating and shit, yeah, so you must be a big fan of this album yeah. and shit. <laughs> Any, yo, anyway. yo, I'll, I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I just wait till the track comes back and shit. But, but anyway, yeah, I remember one pre dawn. I remember one pre dawn. They played um fucking country. They played like hella Nelly songs, like country grammar, oh, drop wow. down, get your eagle on, girl, and ten mic. Oh, oh. I, I think I remember that one. Yeah. But yeah, man. Um, that's crazy. I was like, "What the hell was that?" Yeah, yeah. Cause I heard it too, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" Oh my god! No, I, think it's, I think it's coming from Tribe. Yeah. Yeah, cause at first I thought it was you or him. Yeah. Yeah, we hit all of his business right now and shit. Like, yeah. let me stop. <laughs> I'd rather listen to Country Grammar than Forever. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, Nelly Bill is a five mic. Oh, wow. Mm. We haven't even started talking about it yet. Oh yeah, three six mafia's coming. Sam said you're right. Oh wow, damn Sam. What Sam said? He'd rather listen to Puffy's forever. Oh shit. Okay, y'all killing me with these ratings and shit. Like <laughs> what's what's next? A 30 mic album and shit? Like <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I know certain songs off the Nelly Bill. Oh yeah, let me say this is like I'm telling you. When I was growing up, this album was like you saw a band aid and motherfuckers everywhere and shit like that. <laughs> niggas were, like, I'm telling niggas were trying to rock the grills. Like come on, where I was from, they were trying to get like the aluminum foil and shit like that, spray paint. The shit with like gold, thinking that they got grills and some shit. I'm like, no. Oh my god. Ronnie said, "Rick songs get on y'all nerves." Cause I love you, or if I ever fall in love. Oh, definitely Lenny Williams. Cause I love you. I hate both songs. To be real with you. So. Wait, you 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 don't like Shy's If I Ever Fall in Love? I'm tired of that song. I'm not sick of that song. The the other one that you mentioned, Lenny Williams. Yeah, that I I, I get sick of that one. <clears throat> Even my mom gets sick gets sick of hearing that one because it sounds like he's begging throughout the entire song. Right, like I love. Like, I mean, like oh, 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 right, God. like, do we yeah. really need seven, eight minutes of Lenny Williams saying "Cause I love you"? Like, come on. Like, no, no. Let, let me listen to something else. Cause, yeah. Shit. See, with certain artists, when they do like a six or seven minute song and shit like that. Mm-hmm. They don't all, it's like you, they have to really draw you in. Like, um, prime example, when, um, Pat LaBelle did that song, Love Need Want You, mm-hmm. and shit like that. Part, I want to switch, ironically, this when we talked about on the song album and shit. That was like a six or seven minute track and shit, but mm-hmm. she wasn't begging and shit, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. She was just singing the song. Who else? Um, hell, uh, this might be sacrilegious, but I I can't. I feel like End of the Road gets overplayed sometimes by Boys to Men. I, I like End of the Road. I never get sick of that song. I like it too, but then you have motherfuckers just randomly singing that shit. And stuff like that, and then niggas be crying and shit. That one, and I'll make love to you with oh, Kanye. I can't, I can't stand that one. I, I like it, but I just can't stand Kanye. I'll make love. 
and, and then the fucking instrumentation. I don't like playing that or never will play it again. That's one of that's one of my things. Right. I don't think I ever ever play that song again. Ever. I skipped it. I skipped it. Right. And then the beat sounds all sensual then it ends up turning to like some Disney world ish with the string like cinematic right like you know. I'm like was that really yeah, like, what did it get from being romantic to like a big <laughs> cinematic moment type shit right like um I love water once dry I love on bending knee me too yeah, I even love vibing, but I make love to you. I like, but I kind of got sick of it with the whining. I like vibing. Yeah, the remix and shit. Oof. Oh yeah. Oh, speaking of that, I have one one of the albums I picked up is a Boys to Men album that I'll that I'll show y'all when we do the collection. Yeah. Gotcha. That shit was terrible, yo. <laughs> Did not like it. Definitely. What was terrible? The the music. The whole song you talk about. <laughs> I'll make love to you. No, the uh, the Nelly shit I'm talking about. Oh, oh. Shit. all right. So I guess we can jump into Nellyville. So wait, why I, I have this album? Why am I doing this? Okay. I, I wish you wouldn't show it. <laughs> yeah. So this is the Please album. don't show it. Please don't show it. No. <laughs> this is the era when he had the bandaid on his face. Yeah. Uh I never understood. Other people started doing that shit. You said what? And then other people started doing that shit. Right. I'm trying to figure out what the history of the band they why he had. That's that's where his his, his brother. I, th- I think it was his brother. Somebody that he knew was locked up and he was wearing it like in honor of him. Oh. That's why. Right. Oh, yeah. I didn't and then know. yo, wow. there was people up here that was that was rocking that shit. I'm like, why are y'all rocking a bandit on your on your face? Mm. You know. So uh, does he replace the bandaid, or does he just keep the bandaid on? The, he don't. He don't wear it no more. I, I think the dude came out of prison. Oh, I know. I meant like back in the day, like. Yeah, like he had like like everywhere you saw him, he was wearing like different ones. Mm, okay. Mm. Well, that. Thank you on that. Charlie. That one I remember, and I I, sh- I should have remembered that, right? <laughs> but everybody up here was was doing that shit. I'm like, why are these dumb niggas up here doing uh, rocking that? But yeah, um, so after the release of Country Boy, oh wait, let me get into this shit. Um, um, this was a release um, June 25th, 2002, of course on Universal and For Real. Nelly was an executive producer with Kevin Laws. Mind you, Nelly had more creative control. Um, real, real Young Num, um, The Neptunes, J.E., Track Boys, Just Blaze, and Ryan Bowser. Singles known for was number one, Hot and Her, uh, Dilemma, Air Force Ones, Work It, and Pimp Juice. It has Serge the Entertainer, Lala Anthony, Kaijan. Lala's on this? Yeah. Wow. Murphy Lee, um, I, um, Ali, King Jacob, Kelly Rowland. Justin Timberlake, Mimi Siegel, Freeway, and that's it. All right, so after the release of Country Grammar, Nelly experienced like a lot of commercial success, but he ended up getting into it with like a few rappers. Um, one of the rappers he got into it with was um, Eminem, believe it or not, wow. because in the early 2000s, um, what happened was um, Nelly he appeared on he appeared on TRL and stuff like that too and shit like that and oh. he pretty much said some shit like this and Eminem and shit like that and said that Eminem was and said that Eminem wasn't the best and shit like that making fun of his name and stuff too and so Eminem dropped this this track called Detroit Grammar which I never heard. This shit, cause I knew they had like an issue with one another, but I never really actually knew why they had an issue. But and it nearly actually apologized to Eminem. Smart move, right? Right, because if y'all know what happened three years later with certain Eminem beefs and shit, Nelly mm-hmm. was lucky he got off scot clean. 
Right. However, there was another rapper where he got into it with, and we all know who this guy is. Terrace One. Oh. But who, who, who are you about to say? I said, I was going to say, wasn't it like, never mind. <laughs> oh. Shit, you said, go ahead. Shit, I don't. But Karis won and Nelly. So I know what some of y'all might look at this beef like. How is the Blastmaster, the teacher, one of hip hop's legendary and impactful MCs going into it with an up and comer? And this is where I believe the whole ageism in hip hop kind of came into play because Karis One has went on to say that he felt disrespected by a lot of the younger hip hop crowd that forgets about him and other older hip hop cats. And he mentioned Nelly's name and shit like that too. And so um, I want to say what ended up happening was that I want to say Nelly threw the first shot with the Rock the Mic remix. We want to talk about that. And Karis One came out with um, the Over Here track and shit like that too. Um, oh no, scratch that, track that. It was he came out with Clear Him Out first. Then Nelly came out with Rock the Mic. Right. And then that's when Karis One wanted to boycott the release of this album because he said, if, if you're a true hip hop fan, don't buy this album. She were. I didn't buy this album. This was a gift. <laughs> you know, just clearing that up really quick. You know, that up? <laughs> and even on the song number one um, on this track, on this um, album two, he was throwing shots at Karis One too. So, yeah, man. Uh, right. But everyone, Nellyville became one of the biggest sellers and shit like that too. And Karis One, he even went on to say he didn't really mean to diss Nelly. He was just mad at how him as a legend wasn't really getting that respect over the years and shit. Which. I see where both points were getting at. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be he, real. He didn't drop nothing good since uh, uh the, the I, got, I got next joint. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you said sneak attack was good. I never heard it though. Yeah, I, I like sneak attack, but okay. Yeah, but we'll, we'll talk about that one day. One day right. we'll talk about that. But yeah, Nellyville. Um, and like I said, this was also the album. Like he got like a lot of massive appeal. Like I said, this was album was everywhere and shit right um huh man look at the album cover man i swear to god the sweatband i swear the sweatband era oh, Lord. The gr- this just screams 2002 i'm sweating man. god you got J- jada kiss wearing napkins on his head like a damn fool and of shit. course mentioning jada kiss <laughs> of course uh, of course i was waiting <laughs> with a fucking hoodie and shit um yeah, man. Now, I'm going to be real with y'all. I don't have the same love for this album as Country Grammar. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, and, he, and y'all would think, y'all would think, oh, he, he's going to love this album Country Grammar. Like, nah. Right? There are some tracks I do have to be like, okay, this was this is just crap. But, mm-hmm. and I know one track in particular, I'm going to always say is crap, but... <laughs> Yeah. And Country Grammar is still in print too because they recently re released the album last year. Oh, God. So, yeah. Yeah. So, track number one, Nellyville. This was a nice song where Nelly's talking about his utopia and how he sees the world in his, la- in his world, in his eyes and shit. <clears throat> this was a pretty nice song, but the beat at first. Sounded like some shit you would hear from like the Chronicles of Narnia or some shit like that, <laughs> like that weird ass. Oh, I was like, yeah. and then it just got into this little happy dappy Midwestern kind of ordeal and shit. But yeah, I mean, it, it's an I right song, you know. Hey, Chronicles of Narnia was a good movie. Hey, it was, it was. <laughs> I I only like the the first one. I didn't care for Prince Caspian. I didn't see Prince Caspian in the second, the third one. Wow. You, you know, you know, niggas only read line to wish the wardrobe. They ain't read that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try, I try to get into the other Narnia book. I right. did. I was just right. like, "What the fuck am I reading?" What is going on here? Yeah. I, 
I, I just read some Arthur after that shit. <laughs> he said Arthur. So Arthur in the Lost Library book. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, no, shit. No. My OBW is bothering me. <laughs> uh, dude. No. I didn't like this song, no. Hmm. Back to normal. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, um, Nellyville. It was a pretty, it was pretty decent way to start off the album. The, uh, yeah, I just didn't know what direction it was going when it came to the beat and all that. <laughs> I feel you on that. <laughs> and this is what bothers me. How, how you, I hate when rap albums do this because I hate when they have a song and then you have the intro next like why not just have getting it started as the first one but anyway so yeah. this so i'm not gonna lie these skits i did enjoy these skits so set of the entertainer and lala about to have a night out and lala comes to set the entertainer's place and all lala wants to do is hear nellyville and shit like mm. and and this is and, <laughs> and this is back when cds were popular and shit like that too so said it in the tennis like oh i have he, he acts like he has nellyville and she's like i want to hear nellyville like lala just <laughs> begging then they hear nellyville and so he actually goes out to go buy nellyville and so it's a continuous story throughout the whole fucking mm. album so i enjoy these skits because <laughs> so I, I like said the entertainer and mm. lala is funny when needed to be and shit so <laughs> this is before carmelo Carmelo ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I still hadn't met <laughs> Cheerios. Years before they even got yeah. together. So. Yeah, back when mm. she was a DJ and shit. Right. Yeah. I love I love Cedric. He's hilarious. I love the Kings of Comedy. Great comedian. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting this started interlude, yeah, pretty much it was it was funny. <laughs> I'll, I'll admit that. I mean, you haven't said the entertainer on this album like like he did with Country Room. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. And then now you add La La to the mix, so it makes it a little bit more interesting. Definitely. Yep. Now, Hot and Her. Her spelled H E R R E. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I, this is a, I like this song. I I, I fuck with this song and shit. It's like every time you hear that, dun, 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 oh hot air, oh hot air. Yeah. yeah. It's like y'all know what he's about to get in it and shit like that. Oh, and then, yeah. um, the Neptunes. Even though I do talk shit about them, I, this is a beat I fuck with and shit. And believe it or not, this is actually the last song on Nellyville because you know the story oh we like the album but it's missing something that can get people in the clubs you know mm -hmm. how you know label executives say so Neptunes they drew influence from the go-go music most notably um Chuck Brown um Bustin' Loose song and shit like that too that was released I think in 1979 I want to say and that's how they did that beat we did like go go bust new sample and shit which i thought that that was kind of very unique especially with the neptune because you know how they used to do like the synths and all that shit um again this is another song where nelly has some of those cheesy lines like i was like good gracious ass is bodacious what the hell is bodacious <laughs> what the hell is bodacious please somebody me. please please tell me what the hell is bodacious you lost me I don't know. Cause that's that's um, what white people say when they see a fine woman. She's bodacious. No, I doubt <laughs> like, they say that. They don't say that no more. That's an eighties thing. I doubt it. Bodacious. I doubt it. <laughs> She's like, bodacious. Even some lines like um, got off the freeway exit one hundred six and parked it. Ashtray. Oh, that was actually a clever line. Ashtray flip get time to spark it, and then um. It was just like a like one of those songs, like club banger songs, and of course the chorus is getting hot in here. 
So take off all your like everyone knows that chorus. Yeah. <coughs> Dope song, <laughs> nice club banger. Fuck with it. They they overplayed this so much, so so much. This whole album was overplayed, man. Let's keep it above. Wow. So so much. I love I like the song. Um, I love the Neptune. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this song definitely. I feel like this song got overplayed when it came out, cause it was like getting played everywhere, even on TV with the video, whether it was on BET or MTV or wherever. It was it was all over the place too, and and yeah, I heard you. I remember hearing it in um the the Chris Rock movie Head of State. Yes. Yeah. Very dope movie. I, mean, I haven't seen that in years. It's it's good to hear it every once in a while, but not all the time. Cause like I said, it got overplayed to the point where I got so annoyed. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. But there's one song which we all know where. Oh yeah. We're gonna talk about that. <laughs> uh-huh. Track number four, them boys, featuring Kai John and Murphy Lee. Um, them bars, them bars, like, oh, by the way, Hot in Here was actually the winner for Grammy Award for Best Male Arm Rap Solo Performance and shit, too. Wow. Yeah. So that's when Nas Grammy went. <laughs> and it was actually, it was actually Nas, <laughs> Nelly's first number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Wow. And in Canada, oh, which, wow. um, let's be grateful Nas got a Grammy, y'all. <laughs> Years later. Mm-hmm. Twenty years later, but mm-hmm. anyway, um, them boys. It's a dope. It's an okay song and shit. Again, um, Saint Lunatics not really my cup of tea like that, but it, they're in the quiet taste. Yeah, they're not my cup of tea. Coffee, hot chocolate, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so are they so so are they soda to you? Nothing. I don't drink soda. So, so, no, none of those things. <laughs> Them boys. Them boys. Um, it didn't appeal to me like that. I didn't care too much for it. Mm, respect. Um. Now we're gonna get into O Nelly. You know what's interesting about this song? Uh-huh. What? This nigga introduced himself two times on this fucking track. With the second verse, like he says, first name Nelly, last name Nell. <laughs> okay. First letter C, last letter L. Okay. Then the third verse. One more time. N E dash L L Y. Where where the hell did the dash come from? Is he a cheerleader? <laughs> What's going on here? That's like that's like the baby bouncing up on the stage. N E L L Y. What's that spell? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh man. But yeah, this, this song is is entertaining and shit just because of that shit, in my opinion. So mm-hmm. yeah, J E saved the day with that beat. Yeah. N E L L. Oh God. No, 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 no. This is a skip for me. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> 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 oh Nelly, it, I'll admit this song was definitely entertaining, a bit funny, and a little catchy. And Je said the trick mm. with that beat. That's all I'm gonna say. Definitely. Um, next song, Pimp Juice. This okay. is another signature song. This song was the beginning of the whole controversy against Nelly. And if you guys, people kind of boycotted his music one time because around this time he was actually having his own brand of pimp juice. And this was around the time when the whole tip drill remix controversy came out and people kind of boycotted his music saying that he was promoting prostitution with his music, especially in Spelman College and shit. Yeah. Wow. Um, other than that, this song was okay. I mean, 
I know I I never knew Ron Isley did a remix to with Ronelli on this song. I'm about to hear it after. But um again, so, some of these lines it, it's it's entertaining. I can't lie. It has to be like like you ain't from Russia, so bitch, why you Russian? Like <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. What the hell? And you um, wonder why I don't like Nelly? <laughs> Who wrote that? A, a, a kindergarten kid wrote that shit? Who wrote that? Wow. It was him. Nelly wrote it. It was him that wrote it? Nelly wrote this song. That is the dumbest line for her. Nelly wrote this and Jason Everson. That's like that's like saying, oh, yeah, I love pizza, but I'm not from Italy. <laughs> oh, oh, I got one more. <laughs> that's why I, I, that's that's how he says, it. I, I got my fade. Everybody had braids. Now they switched to fade and think about braids. What? <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> Boy, sit your ass down and go. Boy, oh, sit your ass down and go play some baseball. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, oh, Holy shit. Oh, that is bad. Oh, yeah. Before Lily said, you ain't from Russia, so why are you Russian? <laughs> is that supposed to be a metaphor? Mm-hmm. That's funny. Oh. 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 Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, okay. 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 Wow. Okay. No. Okay. No. 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 This is this is no, this is a pass for me too. <laughs> yeah, I I did not care for Kent Juice at all. This song is not for me. Can we talk about Tip Drill? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you really want to talk about talk about? Yes, tip? I love that video. <laughs> oh, you love the video! Yes, I love the video. Oh, <laughs> yes, wow. I love the video. I didn't that pay is- attention to what he was saying. I, he sounded like in every other Nelly song. I like the video. Well, audacious. We, we, we can talk about because that's technically the remix, so we, right. can, we can talk about. Oh, that's the remix. So that's the remix for this one. No, to EI. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh wow. To, yeah, so we we can technically talk about. Yes. Okay, well, Tip Drill. Ah, the re- the video. Oh my god. Bodacious. Yeah, bodacious. <laughs> the way the motherfucker slid the. Yes, the credit okay. card. I've never seen that. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, that that got people in Georgia protesting against him. Yeah. Well, the, bro, Georgia? This is the place that had Freak Nick back in the 90s, and they protested? That's and this is the place that had Future. Wait. Yeah, Future, all that shit, but y'all want right. to protest against this? They got, they got Mag- Magic City Strip Club down there. Everybody knows Magic City. Mr. Mr. Bodacious, Mr. Right. First, first grade rhymes, nigga. Right. <laughs> Tip drill. That's a classic video. I love that. Shit. Epic. <laughs> anyway, Air Force Ones. Um. Yeah, everybody knows this song. Mm-hmm. Step on my Air Force Ones. <laughs> Step on my Air Force Ones. <laughs> I, mean, I, I like this song. I'm not gonna lie. I like this song. You know. This this was um featuring Ka- Kaijan Ali Jones. Oh, this sudden accent of mine. God damn. Ali Jones and Murphy B. Yeah, this one was good. Just Nelly's love for shoes and Air Force Ones and shit. I mean, everybody had them fresh white Air Force mm, Ones. I still got mine. Yeah. I, I, I used to have the De La Soul Air Force Ones. Classic. I gotta get another pair. Classic. Because it got scuffed by crackers stepping on my shit. Oh, Over the years, that's a that's a that's from a, a scene from Do the Right Thing. Why you scuffed on my Jordans? <laughs> Yo, that? Yo, I still got a couple pair of Air Forces, man. Like like they oh, yeah, everybody man. was wearing them. That was like the sneaker of the two thousands. It wasn't Jordans, Yeezys wasn't even a fuck, thing back then. Fuck Jordans, fuck Yeezys. You know what I mean? It was all about Air Forces. I, I bought like so many different pairs. Um, fuck yeah. Jordans. Give me Adidas. <laughs> Give me Adidas too. Man. Adidas. That was the thing here, like, like when this song was big, and then you know, at the at the in the era that we had like the throwback jerseys and the headbands and the, you know, the um the do rags and yeah, so you know, Air Forces, I, I fuck with it. 
Yeah, Air Force Ones, I, I pretty much knew what the song was going to be about as I was listening. I, ne I never got into this song when it dropped. I just knew a couple people were into this song. Facts. Yeah. Now we're going to get into track eight, which is um, In the Store, which is part two of the quest for the Nellyville CD skit. This time says they entertain a bum rush of the store looking for Nellyville and he's like all sold out and he's been to five stores. Mm -hmm. And and like I said, y'all think the hype was y'all think I'm over exaggerating about the hype of this album. Like I said, this album was big, like oh two, oh three. It was selling everywhere and shit. It was. Like, yeah. It was like the hype of this album was big. Like his first four albums. Wow. Huge commercial sellers at that time and shit. Mm -hmm. But um, but like I said, like I said, we ain't gonna talk about sweat and sue because that's this is my limit. So yeah, <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I think you're gonna want to complete the whole trilogy. No, 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 no. If if it's taking me a struggle to talk about Ice Cube's post people yeah. rejection albums, man. Oh God, <laughs> I, I I'm more down to talk about that than than Nelly. <laughs> now you're going too far. But anyway, <laughs> um. Pretty much, this the only is the clean version that's left and shit like that. And Cedric's like, "What well, fuck, fuck you mean clean and shit? This ain't no, I don't, I ain't do no clean version." But he had ended up buying a clean version anyway. And oh, yeah, shit. we'll see how this ends up. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of this one. Hmm. I think the pretty much the title of the skit. Explain for itself, so there's no need for me to go into detail about it. Right. Um, on the grind, track number nine. I'm I am just rhyming all of you. <laughs> shit. God damn. Man, yeah. god damn, I'm just rhyming all of you and shit. God damn. Yeah. Shit, fuck it. I'm the shit. Anyway. <laughs> um this one was a dope dope song featuring King Jacob, just him talking about how he's on the grind, like a braggadocio track, which that's the thing about this album too. It's a lot more braggadocio tracks and shit like that. Like this was Nelly's "I'm the Shit" album, in my opinion. So, yeah. No. <laughs> hmm. On the grind, pretty much is self-explanatory. Pretty much a day-to-day -day hustle that's going on. That's what I got out of it. Nothing more to it. Facts. Okay. Are y'all braced? Yeah, we yeah, we already can know. It, can it get any worse? What, what, what it is, so. Love you. Yeah. Need you. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> this dilemma. One of the biggest hip hop love songs in history. <laughs> This features Kelly Rowland of Destiny's Child, and it showed people that Beyonce was not the only member in Destiny's Child that can sing. So, I, I like Kelly Rowland. Let's 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 be. I like Kelly Rowland and shit. But so, story of this track. So pretty much, Nelly wanted like a love song on his albums and shit like that, and they were trying to really um get Kelly Rowland and shit like that going too and stuff like that too because Beyonce was getting ready to drop Dangerously in Love but that got kind of held back and both Nelly and Kelly met at TRL in 2001 and shit like that and Nelly wanted Kelly to do the song and Kelly Rowland did it and she had to redo the song plenty of times till it got perfect and the rest is history um it got a Grammy Award for Best Rap Song Performance. Again, like I said, another Grammy for Nelly and shit. <sighs> Grammy Nelly. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, and I don't know who's worse when it comes to these love songs, Nelly or Ja Rule. And shit Definitely like that. Nelly. <laughs> Definitely nah, Nelly. Nah, nah. Ja Rule love songs were good. His was good, but he was always yelling at his love song. Nelly was just well, like, that one I didn't understand. Wait, wait for me to coo and just listen, play my position. Right. Like a short style pickup 
everything mama hit on like these cheesy lines and shit but <laughs> again and this song was so big that they rushed kelly Rowland's album yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. the simply deep album which that album was kind of underwhelming to like a lot of people because once dangerous me in love came out it was a rap yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Kel- i mean the when she dropped miss kelly she get, came back with the miss kelly album and shit too mm-hmm. that's when she's looking good yeah but anyway um dilemma y'all y'all know the song i don't even have to say man <laughs> <laughs> I, I hated this song i don't hate it no more <laughs> like, it, it has grown on me it has songs have, this song has grown on me Jeez. i couldn't stand it when it first came out it was everywhere <laughs> and I, I wasn't i was not a big destiny's child fan except for like a couple of these songs but uh yeah i, I didn't i couldn't stand this song when it came out in, in the 2000s but i like the song now okay another song it you was like. it was like a big dot anthem like back, back when the chicks were wearing like exo and oh, and yeah. baby fat and Nah. On the thumb and shit. Yeah, it, it was like a, a a a hood anthem for the chicks, yo, and I couldn't stand it, but I, I like the song. Yeah, I remember seeing the dilemma video when it came out. Back then, I felt the song was catchy, but um, I hear the song now every once in a while, which is good. But I know. Back then, it got overplayed so many times in the whole I kind of got sick of it. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, next track, Splurge. Yeah, I didn't care for this track. No. <laughs> I didn't. I did not like Splurge either. He should. He should have splurged on better producers. <laughs> 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 he should have did. I I didn't like working either with Justin Timberlake. Yeah. I like the song he did, um, the girlfriend song on the Insync, the last Insync album. That was dope, but I didn't like this this uh, feature. Oh wow! Yeah, work it. I found it to be very. I found it to be um, interesting because I never thought in a million years Nelly would work with Justin Timberlake, someone who was in a boy band. To be honest, and and yeah, the song. I had no idea the song was even a hit because I never heard it getting played. So that was a surprise to me too. And yeah, it wasn't all that great. I feel you. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, rock the mic remix. This is. Oh this is probably the other song you might like to try. Nope. Really? <laughs> no. This wasn't even a Nelly track. It was a Beanie's track. It's so, it was already a great song with Beans and Freeway. Why the hell did they need Nelly in the remix? Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, that was my whole thing. I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but anyway, this was the infamous track. First of all, the song itself was good by Beanie and shit. Right. That was on the reason, if I'm not mistaken. Rock the mic? No, that's on State Property, the first album. Right. Okay, the first State Property I, album. I need, to get, I need to get the vinyl on this shit, but shit. Anyway. But yeah, so like I said, the song was already good. But this song was notable really for Nelly's verse against Karis One. Well, he said the lines. I struck a nerve in old MCs wanting to come back. I got the strength that he lost like the fact. Like K, no one here even said your name. Are you really feeling guilty about something, man? S sad, see you really just one more hit, please. You the first old man should get a rapper's pension. No hit since the coalesced mic invention. What are you doing? Uh, yeah. he, mm, <laughs> he he did get at him. A li- he did get at him though. And who Karis one? A little bit, but Karis one ate him up with out of yeah. here. Karis one wasn't worried about he him. Ate him up with out of here. Yeah. Know? Yep. Hey, out of here. 
You ain't, you ain't universal. <laughs> you... God. Your whole style sounds like an end scene commercial. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> uh... Oh my, I don't know what's worse. One Buster said if 106 and Park don't even respect you or your whole style stands like a right. instant commercial. I don't know what's worse. Right. <laughs> but yeah. Dope remix and shit, but the original was way better. Yes. That's how it felt. They don't need a remix for that. <laughs> oh my god. He don't even sound right with Freeway and Beans. I'm like, are you all serious? Like who who call was it to get Nelly on the remix? Out of all people, you could have gotten Eminem who was big at this time. You know what I'm saying? Like why I don't understand the whole like they needed Nelly on the remix for what? Mm, Eminem, man. He, I mean, he was already on Renegade and shit. Right, too. exactly. You prefer I mean, his acting? I don't think he could act at all. I never seen him in nothing. What did What did he do that he was acting? The Real Husbands of Hollywood. Oh, never saw it. <laughs> he was in the, in the Longest Yard remake with Chris Rock and Burke. I saw that. I don't even remember him. You know. Wow. Yeah, I, I did not care too much for this remix. I didn't do nothing. Shit. I'm gonna be real with y'all. The last couple of songs, yeah. I'm just gonna glide through. Alright. And shit. Um, by the way, if I didn't say it, my favorite song is probably gonna be Air Force Ones and shit. Wow. Yeah. Of course she's up. I didn't care for the gank. Me neither. Alright. Um, 5,000. I didn't know what the fuck he was doing. I didn't know what the fuck that was. Me neither. I had no idea. <laughs> nope. Um, number one was good, but not great. That's from the Training Day soundtrack? Yes. Oh, they played that a lot too. I don't remember number one, to be honest. It's not memorable. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why. <laughs> this was also another song where he was throwing shots at Karis One and shit too. With line, I'm tired of people judging what's real hip hop. Half the time you'll be them niggas who fucking album flop. You know, <laughs> both done sick and it just left the dock. Is that your best Nelly impression? Oh you sound like the penguin. You. <laughs> Why you sounding like that? I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just high as fuck. <laughs> anyway, Country yeah. Grammar Two. I never knew he did a Country Grammar Two, but he named it CG Two. Mm. Eh, wasn't memorable. No. I don't remember it. I don't <laughs> no. <remember that. laughs> um, Telling the truth. Right. <laughs> say now. Now this say one now. I like. Yeah, I like say now. Yeah. He definitely like went a little dark with this one. Yeah. Talking about the hard streets of St. Louis and shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, talking yeah. about the crime in his city and shit. Um I like the line when he said, your, and I'm not going to do the impression, um, your baby mama's on the porch, telling her daughter's come in, got fathers grabbing sons, where the hell have you been? Boy, y'all just starting young. I'm talking 13 and 10. They they start trading in the streets, some type of ghetto battles. Definitely a very descriptive song. Um, next to Air Force One, it's probably my favorite track, too. So, yeah. From the, from the mean streets of the cornfields in Missouri. <laughs> Been to Missouri? No, not yet. <laughs> okay, so how would you even know? It? Hey, that, that's all I see. That's all they talk about is the the acres of of field and all that all out there. You know, in the arc, the big golden arc that they have out there. You know, it looks like McDonald's, the McDonald's logo. Nah, this was a pass for me. <laughs> Yeah, Say Now was um, was definitely one of the one of the good tracks that I like off this album. All other ones like were were just forgettable or were just whack. Definitely. And the last skit is uh, "Fuck It Then." 
pretty much um so this is what happened lala has been waiting and shit like that she's like where the fuck have you been i've been sitting here for hours i don't watch until all this was cd judge judy montel yeah. and shit. cedric is all like drink some champagne i don't want no damn champagne where's the nellyville and he's like well it's a clean version what what do you think this is rated pg and like look yeah. baby i can cuss for everybody don't you worry about the cussing you think we are the prom? What the fuck is going on? And then he just says, fuck it <laughs> out then and shit like that. Like, I like the skit. The skit's oh, entertaining yeah. and shit, so. Wow. Yeah. All this for a CD, damn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Tilt said, I'll tell her to open her mouth, right? <laughs> no. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't care for it. Yeah. <laughs> It was funny, and then too the fact that she she fussing at him over a damn CD. Like, look, if she, if he said that this was the only copy that they had, look, you may as well just deal with it. But if not, then just shut up. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's my take yeah. on it. Of course. Overall, I don't like this album as much as Country Grammar. Right. To me, it's not a classic to me. No. I know a lot of people want to say, oh, it's, a, it's just as good as Catch Grammar. I'm like, nah. I feel like it's one of those albums, like, it was so successful. It was, a, I hate to say, a product of its time. Yeah. That people remember this so much. But that does not mean it's not a bad album, though, because. You know, he's definitely trying to do different things. Like I said, he was doing more braggadocio. Like, the country grammar to me, I felt like with that album, okay, I felt like with that album, he made more effort do like doing the more lyrical thing with this one. It was just like more on that poppy mainstream kind of shit. But he like, it's like he focused more on doing songs, like with the dilemma and um with um hot in here say now so i'll give this the 3.5 out of 5 and shit like that is the last enjoyable album i would bump from nelly so don't expect sweat suit brass knuckles the self-titled album i think he came out with so yeah y'all be grateful and this album is still in print too unfortunately Tip, tip drill in Carton here, like, that's about it. Mm. <laughs> and Dilemma. That's, that's about it. Shit. Yeah, this album, I did not. It wasn't as good as Country Ground to be real. I could listen to that one over the same day, so. <laughs> I'll just give this one out of five. God damn. Yeah. I, I, it just wasn't... I don't see how in the world this album was so big during that time, right. but still managed to sell so many copies and win awards for some of the songs on here. That's what I still don't get. That's just I mean, me. The 2000s, man, it was like the Midwest yeah. was just doing their thing. You know, Eminem and Nelly were just the top cats at that time, winning the awards yeah. and shit. Anyway, yeah, so um, I would think for a second yeah. album, I thought it would be like way better, but it wasn't. Right. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to end off the video right here because I got an appointment I got to go to. Um. <clears throat> Sunday, we're gonna go into the rock music of things. We're gonna talk about me and Tribe. We're gonna talk about the Rolling Stones. Something good for once, yes. <laughs> work album <laughs> in '86. Um, what was the album you wanted to talk about this week to try? The album? What album? I told you to text me about a certain. Oh, album. um, Maxwell Embryo. Embryo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be um I'll let you know about that. 
Unfortunately, Jago was the last temptation. <laughs> he said, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's how I'm going to do like. <laughs> but, she, but she don't like country grand, bro. Hell no. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, and then the Snoop Dogg breakdown is going to be Friday. Great. Next, next Friday. Not this Friday, but next Friday. Next Friday. Sure. Which that was gonna be interesting. I might make that Friday night at midnight. Something I'm looking forward to. Snoop Dogg discography. Yeah. Finally, we're gonna talk about the good and the bad. <laughs> and the what the fuck? Okay. Yes, the mediocre. <laughs> All right. And next month, September twenty seventh, is gonna be our collection video slash surprise review. So we're gonna have Santa Claus Eric coming up. <laughs> We're gonna have the locks support of BJ coming up. Oh God! <laughs> We're gonna, and then um, Mickey is gonna come up too. Um, yeah, man. Like I said, I'm not gonna show nothing else. This is gonna be probably. It's not gonna be as crazy as the last one, but right. we'll see what happens when I go to this final show Sunday. Right. But thank y'all so much for bearing with us and doing the Nelly reviews okay. ashley's always good to see you yes. tries always good to see yes. you yes um yeah man and thank y'all i know this nelly was not what i was used to i was used to <laughs> when it came to the usual hip-hop abuse but at the same time who else was going to do it <laughs> well i hope everyone has a good night and hope everyone um have a good weekend in case i don't see y'all i might do it chat tomorrow i might i'll let y'all know but peace. Right. peace peace